So there are so many reasons why you should not become a CRNA. Literally, I'm going to give you some personal experience that I've been through to tell you why you may not want to become a CRNA. So definitely stick around um, so I can tell you all about it. Hi, my name is Christine and welcome to your video. If this is your first time here and you want to become a CRNA or grow your CRNA career, definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for being here today. And I know this video is kind of a little, you know, negative, but I have to be real with you. I can't always talk about the positive. I gotta also talk about the negative. So you can make a really great decision on if you want to become a CRNA. Because I've had some bad experiences. And you may, I, I may seem like I'm all excited and happy all the time. I am. I'm very happy and positive. But I've been through a lot, especially being a CRNA. And it's not all roses when you may think about it, when you're here on YouTube. So I'm here to be real with you, to talk about a little about the negative. And um, definitely tell you from personal experience. So definitely stick around towards the end of the video. Because I'm going to get really personal with you, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go through five reasons and as, as well as personal experience towards the end of the video, okay? So first reason. So becoming a CRNA can be a hard road. It is not all roses when you think about it. You know, you have to become you know, a registered nurse. You gotta get a bachelor's degree. You have to you know, get ICU experience. You gotta be involved. And then you gotta apply to a program. And a lot of the programs are doctoral degrees. So the first step is, the first thing is basically it's such a difficult um, road. So it could be a long road. And so sometimes, you know, it could be a lot of time and money, also sacrificing your family. You know, it can be hard. That's why it's so important to have such a supportive family whenever you're going to school, no matter what area you're going into. You need support. While I'm here for you on YouTube, and I'm here to be your support, I'm here to motivate you, I'm here to guide you, and I'm here to inspire you. And of course, you know, thinking about that, money is definitely something you got to think about. You know, it's very expensive. So you may not say, mm, a lot of time and money. So think about it too. You know, becoming a registered nurse can be like 30000 the 60,000, depending on the program, you know, that can be an expense of its own to even become a nurse. Then you may not get into the ICU right away. You may have to go into a medical surgical unit and, you know, and work in a medical surgical unit and then try to apply to a program, try to apply to become an ICU nurse. So it can be rigorous. It can definitely, definitely pull on your soul because I feel like you're always constantly like pushing yourself to and pushing and pushing to get what you want. So it can be hard on the average person. The next thing, the second reason I would say is CRNA school is very expensive. You know, I, of course, we can think about like the positivity. There are scholarships out there. You know, if you work in a state versus out of state, you know, working like going to school in the state is of course less expensive. You know, private schools are a lot more expensive. You know, maybe limited amount of schools. You know, there's not as many schools. You know, so you gotta think about that too. So, like, like if you go to a state school, for example, you're looking at maybe maybe sixty thousand dollars just for CRNA school, as high as over one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars just for CRNA school alone. So now you combine that with registered nursing, right? So that can be a lot of loans, a lot of money out of pocket. So that's definitely a reason why you may not say to yourself, like, is it really worth it? Um, being real with you, it can be expensive, you know? And I, to be honest with you, like throughout my whole career, you know, nursing, you know, to become a registered nurse and also being in CRNA school, everything was pretty much out of pocket slash um, loans. And so you're gonna rack up a lot of loans. And I did it, but fortunately enough, I'm done with it. I paid off all my loans in a very short period of time because I budgeted myself. You know, so even though you want to become a CRNA, you're like, oh, it's so much money, you can still do it because if you're, you have time management, you have goals, you have a budget, 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 budget's everything. You can do it. You can pay off all your loans in a timely manner. 
maybe you have to work overtime or maybe you, you know, you, you budget your lifestyle that where you can pay things off really fast. You know, I think it's definitely doable, even though that is definitely kind of a, a turnoff when you're thinking about, you know, becoming a CRNA. That's another thing. Another reason, you know, three, reason number three, probably, or four. <laughs> so the next thing I would say is the schooling is rigorous. It is definitely going to challenge you. It is going to break you apart and then build you right back up. It is not an easy program and it's not for everyone. You have to be brutally serious. You have to be able to, you know, really be focused on studying because for me, I'm not fortunate enough that I just, just like, I'm not saying I'm not smart. I have to work, I have to study a lot to understand the information. I have to read it the same paragraph, maybe 10 times in order for me to understand it. But that's fine. That's me. While there's other people, you know, they're able to read one paragraph and they're good. We're all different. We're all not meant to be the same. But I knew that I wanted to become a CRNA and no matter what I had to do, I was going to do it. So I study, 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 study. You're going to study in the morning, in the evening, at night when you're snacking. You're going to be studying. You're going to be studying in the car. You're going to be studying in school. You're going to be studying in clinicals. It's nonstop studying and information. So that can be a turnoff because you may think, oh, I'm going to get accepted to CRNA school. You get accepted and it's always going to be a breeze. It's not a breeze, even to the extent that I don't even recommend you working and, you know, working a job and going to CRNA school. You can do it. Of course, everyone's different. You can do it, but it may sacrifice on your studying habits and you spend all this time and money to get into a program. You don't want to sacrifice that. There have been occasions where, you know, students in their first year, they, you know, worked and they went to school and they flunked out. That precious opportunity, gone. So I'm just being real with you. I'm being honest with you. Because I wanna be honest with you and let you know, like that is definitely something that can happen. But if you listen to me, as well as of course do your research with other YouTubers that are CRNAs, and of course everyone's different and how they say things, gotta take it serious. It is a tough program and you have to be to the level of an anesthesiologist knowledge-wise. Like a medical doctor, you have to know your stuff in and out. Like it's not even, like I'm dead serious. You have to know your stuff in and out. And the program is so, it's such a short program. It can be like three and a half years, you know, or maybe two and a half years if, it, if you're a master's. You need to like know your stuff in and out. And when you're in clinical, it's not just only CRNAs you're going to be, um, going to be your preceptor. It's going to be anesthesiologists. They're going to question you. They're going to definitely, you're going to have a lot of pressure under your belt, but it's okay. You're going to study. You're going to work hard. You got that passion and you know what you want to do. So you're going to do it like I did it because a lot of CRNAs, like, I mean, 95% of rural America is basically CRNAs are the only energy to providers. Even for me, for example, I... When I'm in the operating room and I'm providing anesthesia, it's just me and that and, and, and my patients, you know. And of course, an anesthesi the, an the anesthesiologist who I work with collaboratively will come in and out if they, if, you know, if, if I need anything. But mainly, just me and my beautiful patient, you know, when I'm providing anesthesia. So you have to be able to be independent, work in a fast-paced environment, troubleshoot, and more. So definitely. Your ICU experience is essential. So that's another reason that people may say to self, mm, maybe I don't want to become a CRNA. That seems kind of tough. Yeah, being really honest, yeah, it is tough. Like it was brutal for me too and my classmates. I remember my classmates being up late at night in the library, like having sugar candy, trying to stay up all night, lack of sleep. I had, and for me, I had a newborn baby when I went to CRNA school. I had my daughter six days before I started my first day of classes. And I thought, you know, being a first time mom, oh, I'll be fine. I had no clue. Literally, I had no clue how hard it was gonna be. But my husband was supportive. I had supportive family. My, my director in my program was super supportive. All my classmates were amazing and supportive. So that's all you need, right? You have support with each other. Like I even had one of my 
really good classmates. Like we were really close. And even to this day, we're still close. Like she had triplets, three, three young children when she was in school. So she did it, but it's about support. So you may say, so, oh, I don't have any support. Well, I'm here for you. I'm here for you on YouTube. I'm here to guide you. And I know sometimes you may say to yourself, oh, there's many reasons here that I'm not going to become a CRNA. But if you really want to do it, you can, you can do it. You just got to believe in yourself. And I'm here to say to, say, to, say to you that you can do it. It is tough. It's not roses, but you can do it. You just got to push through it. Just with, with anything in life, if you work hard and you just don't give up, even when you're in the boiling trenches, you just don't give up and just keep moving forward and try to do the best that you can do. And of course, you know, finding classes who you can work, work and study with or maybe bounce ideas off. Even your professors, they are there to teach you and guide you. You know, utilize your resources. You know, and for me, I did that and it really helped me a lot. And so definitely when you think about a program, it has to be a very supportive program. And if you have a family, that's one of the questions when, you're, when you go to the interview. You know, it's not just about them testing you. You also want to know if this program is a good fit for you. You know, so you want to ask those questions, you know, how, are you supportive with families or with young children? You know, you know, how, what are some examples of experiences? You know, how, how has it gone? You know, you just want to ask all those type of questions before you take a big jump into a, a program. You know, another thing, another thing can be, you know, the work environment. Just because, you, just because you're a CRNA doesn't mean that everything's amazing when you work. It can be a definitely a difficult situation. So I'm going to get right into it. Definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. As well, as if you think this, if this video is providing you valuable content, definitely press a like button. It definitely lets me know, you know, if I'm doing, you know, good content for you guys. So the last thing, I'm going to get a little personal. So when I graduated my um, CRNA program, I was excited, multiple job opportunities, but I lived in New York and I said to myself, I really, really want to leave New York and I want to go more south. I just wanted more of a slower paced environment. But reality is just because you, you're in a slower paced environment doesn't mean your job is slower paced, by the way, FYI. So I said to myself, I wanted to go, you know, to a, to a more like a, a more rural or suburban area where I can raise my children. And so I had a job where it was a level one trauma center, which I was excited about, good experience. And when I went for my interview, I was told that it was gonna have a really good work-life balance. You're not gonna work much overtime. You're at the beach. So I'm like, oh, great. And no call. So I was like, wow, this is like a dream come true. You know, and um, I was excited, new job. And then, you know, you don't, when you do your job, you don't really know what to ask. And it's your first time, you know, you're it's just excited to have a job and, and start working as an anesthesia provider. So I worked at my, you know, the hospital I worked at. And it was rigorous. The hours, like, even though you, it was like 7 to 3 o'clock, it could be 7 to 5. It could be 7 to 7. There was never a set time when you left. So that's one thing. So I felt like I was, I was definitely worked a lot of hours. And I felt I, after like... You know, two years, I, I got burnt out. Now, one of the reasons why I didn't leave because it was a transition between practices. So the hospital was looking at, you know, should we keep the current anesthesia group or should we get a new anesthesia group? So I was there right at that cusp time. So when I started working there, like, I was like, I'm so happy to have a job. Like, I don't want to have to, like, pick up and leave. I'm just going to work hard and just do whatever I need to do. To, to be at this institution because I, was, I just moved away from New York. So I was just like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm just gonna do it. So it was kind of shaky not knowing like, is this practice gonna stay? Is this practice gonna leave? And sometimes when one anesthesia group leaves and another anesthesia, anesthesia, anesthesia group comes in, you can't work at that institution for like two years or one year, it depends on your contract. So I was super anxious and super nervous. And my family was super nervous, but I was just like, let me just deal with it. It's okay. Long and behold, they got their contract. So I continued to work there. But then that was like a year later. And um, 
another thing, I wanted to have another child. So I have one beautiful daughter, her name is Bella. She's currently eight years old now, but that's when she was about two, three years old. And she's about three years old. And, you know, I, I was wanted to have another baby. So I was, it was so rocky with my job that I was like, we can't, we're going to wait until we, everything smooths itself out before I get pregnant and have a baby. So I was like, I didn't know for sure, like, you know, should we have a baby? Should we not have a baby? And so it ended up being, I was there for a while, even though it was, and I didn't, and it being, and being a new nurse and kind of in the field, you kind of like, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do. You're so new. You're so thankful to have a job. And so then I got pregnant and I was working there like the long hours, you know, trauma center. It was like, I felt like it was a lot. I was burnt out, but I knew to myself that it has to be something better out there. So had my beautiful baby, Kalea, and um, then I said to myself, all right, I think it's time to, you know, do my maternity leave, work for a little bit there, and then look at other opportunities because I knew this wasn't going to be the end, you know, this isn't going to be my only job. And of course, you don't know how, not, not bad, or like how, you know, the condition, like how, like, every other institution is and you think like this is probably how it is you know you don't know any different um but you said you know what I just need a change I need a new fresh slate so I went ahead looking at other for other jobs I even was willing to start traveling as a CRNA and my husband has a business where he's online he works online so he can, we can go anywhere and then this amazing position opened up for me at my current job and I'm so thankful and I get more experiences in different areas I get like for example I get to do epidurals and spinals and I wanted that type of experience it's very good in your resume to have regional experience by the way and you're like regional is just something that's really cool to have some hospitals don't allow you to do that and um, a lot of the people I worked with like four of us ended up going to this new institution and so it was like oh this is amazing it was like night and day for me. I think I needed that humbling experience to work at an institution where, you know, the, you know, I was burnt out. But at the same time, like all that trauma experience was amazing. Like I felt my skill set was on point. So, I mean, you realize like, wow, this was, even though it was like, you never saw sunshine, it was really good experience. It made me a really strong energy to provider, which can never be taken away from me. So I'm thankful for that. But also, working my new institution and how amazing it is, the people I work with, the staff, the auxiliary staff, you know, my boss and everything is just like, wow, this is amazing. I have better hours and everything. I mean, I have a better work-life balance. And I'm like, wow, so this is how it can be. So another thing you can think about as another reason to not become a CRNA is because maybe you may be working long hours. You may not have time to see your family. You know, everyone has different, you know, plans in life. So a lot of people may work a lot of overtime. You are compensated by making a higher salary, which is awesome and amazing, but it's not for everyone. You know, it is definitely not for everyone. But just be aware that depending on where you work, the culture may not be the most healthiest for you and your family, you know, and um, take that in consideration. So definitely when you interview, you know, to work at a specific place, you want to ask a bunch of questions as well as talk to the staff that's currently working there and hear what, you know, feel it out a bit before you just jump and move to another area or work somewhere. A lot of things that are really nice about a lot of the programs, um, you get to work at different facilities throughout either the state or multiple states, and you get to feel it out. So you can kind of see like, hmm, this is where I want to work. This is where I want to work. Or maybe I don't want to work. So you kind of get to feel it out when you're in schools, which is awesome. So, so in that end, you can do that. So these are a lot of reasons I got a little personal with you guys. I'm sorry I got a little bit, I talked really detailed, but I just want to let you know because I'm here for you and I'm here to give you all the knowledge, all the information that you need to know, you know, to become, before you make a decision to become a CRNA. I know these four reasons were pretty detailed, pretty rough, but you know, end of the day, if you say to yourself, you want to become a CRNA and this is your, you know, your goal and you, you, you have a plan for it. No matter what reason I say, no matter what reason anyone says, you know you want to do it, so you do it. So 
just remember though those are some things to think about whenever you're considering any area all right so if you want to learn more about crnas and how to grow your crna career definitely click one of these videos over here and i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching